Hello bishes, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be vulnerable little bishes and I even took off my horns to engage with y'all in this vulnerability session. But today I just wanna talk about rejection because it's inevitable, it's something we're all going to face, and especially in a field like animation, it can really hurt your feelings or just really feel like a punch in the gut whenever you don't get something that you feel like you've kind of almost been working for since your childhood. But I'm here to, you know, settle those tense feelings and just remind y'all that rejection is not always a reflection of who you are and it's just something that happens and has absolutely nothing to do with you at times. So because I know many of you are, you know, graduating or supposed to be graduating, I don't know what the situation is for 2020. You're gonna eventually be looking for jobs and you're gonna be applying to jobs. A lot of the times you're probably going to get rejected from some of the jobs that you really want to get. Before I even got my first job in animation, I've only been faced with a lot of rejection and even when I applied to internships, I got rejected by so many of them. But let me get to the tea of it all because that I know that's what y'all want to hear. So I applied to a lot of internships during my second year. The one I did get was a production internship at Cartoon Network and although it was not art related or anything, I was still just excited because it was just a um, uh, an internship that's all I really wanted I just wanted to get my foot in the door but I got rejected from places like Disney TV and Nickelodeon again and I think a part of me during that internship though did like kind of sit around and just feel emotionally rejected just because I was like okay well people think I can do this but I feel like I'm still not suited for story or any art related internships apparently for some reason and that was like bothering me but of course instead of just sitting around and being negative I wanted to really start focusing on making my art more story oriented which is a thing you don't really think about because I feel like generally as an art student you're always just like I just need to make my drawings look good they need to just be technically correct when ultimately as you get further and further into animation it's less about that and more about like the clarity of what you want to do and what you want to say. Looking back in time, it's much easier to just reflect on it and be like, that's what you needed to do. But when you're the one who's trying to clarify your work and stuff, it's more confusing because you don't really know if your work is saying what you clearly need to say. So during my third year at CalArts was when I was like, okay, I really need to make a fucking story oriented portfolio. So I, for some reason, was really geared towards Disney feature because during that time, their work resonated with me a little bit more. I feel like the things I draw are a little bit more dimensional and more expressive. And I like drawing wholesome things. And I was like, I guess Disney is the place to go. So I was really encouraged by one of my teachers to apply apply and she really walked me through the process. She really was like advocating for me and helping me which I really appreciated and I thought like from all of this I was like wow I guess I'm going to finally get my first internship at Disney because I really felt like that was what was gonna happen. I decided that I needed to manage my expectations once the summer hit because I was not getting any feedback. I was not getting any responses back through email. So I was just like, fuck, what if I didn't get it? What am I gonna do this summer? Because I did apply to other internships as well, but I did not hear anything back from them. So I was just really relying on this Disney one because I was like, it's the only one that hasn't really given me a clear rejection, nor has anyone announced if they were going to be a part of the internship. So I ended up taking a part-time job that summer at some other studio that wasn't really animation related it was just more of like media and film and just so i was just sitting around at work one day and finally i got this email back from disney being like sorry michelle but we don't think you're ready for the storyboard internship and i was like oh okay and my feedback was always that my drawings were too clean they were too tight every studio has their own specific needs sometimes a television studio might want work that is cleaner because they want stuff to be on model, whereas a feature film studio might want more expressive work from you. So yeah, so I did not get the story internship and I was really bummed about that, but I was also kind of in a state where I kind of was like, I gave up. I ended up actually getting 
accepted as a 2D animation intern, but it was like kind of awkward just living through the whole internship just being like, Yeah, everyone knows I applied to this one thing but did not get the thing that I wanted, so here I am settling for my second backup plan, I guess. I don't know, but it's an internship. It's not permanent to begin with. So I'm not gonna make a fucking big deal out of it and just be like, it was a great experience because I am grateful. I'm grateful that I even was allowed to step my foot in that studio for a few months, okay? So yeah, that was a good experience regardless, but you know, it's just one of those things where I just am always reminded that I'm still not really receiving any signs of acceptance towards the fact that I wanna be a storyboard artist. So I wasn't really sure if I was going in the right direction. So finally fourth year hit. This is the big year because you're thinking like oh this is the year that you gotta look for the jobs for realsies now like there's no more fucking around you gotta find your job otherwise. I felt like I was really going to get a job at DreamWorks for something because after an interview with them, I really thought that I would be getting this gig and I actually previously interned with them as well. So I really thought like, oh, they know me. They kept giving me so many signs that like, you know, I would get this internship. And again, I'm not like trying to hate on anyone. I'm just like explaining the situation as the situation. So before I graduated school, I really thought I was going to get this as my first job because they were just like, oh, don't worry, you're fine. You're like the best intern we ever had. So we're just gonna, you know, hire you or fire you. I don't know. It took them a while to respond. I was anxiously waiting during graduation. And as I was moving into my apartment, I was still just waiting for, you know, the emails. My idea was that this job was not a storyboard artist job, but I was just like, hey, it's still a great way to get your foot into the door. But I will always remember the day that I was just happily shopping for furniture at Ikea for my new apartment with my parents. And I got a call from DreamWorks and I was like, fuck, they're gonna finally tell me. So I ran out of Ikea and I was just like calling and it was like really embarrassing because the service inside was really bad. So I was just like, oh, sorry, let me like run out for a second. So like the HR person who called me was probably just like biting her lips and being like, she's acting so excited, but she doesn't even know what's about to happen. So I ran outside and I was like, yes, this is Michelle, what is happening? And she's like, so the team was really fond of your work and they really like your stuff and it was a really hard decision to make and the moment i heard those words was you know when you get that gut feeling like i know where this where this is gonna go and you're kind of in denial <laughs> for a moment so they're just like it was a very hard decision to make but they have decided to go with somebody else for the position because they just needed someone immediately and they wanted someone with more experience at the moment and of course you know you have that moment where you're just standing outside of ikea as everyone else is continuing about their lives but your world just stops for a hot fucking second and you're just like okay well i guess i'm not gonna get my first job and i'm just gonna live in this apartment i told my parents and i ended up just crying at yukaku because I wasn't crying because of the opportunity. I think I was crying more because of how promised I felt about it only to be like let down because I felt like there's just this so much built up energy that was just like, this was the result of it. I just need to accept the fact that this is not what my past self was thinking about all this time just because you really thought that this was going to be your life after graduation. You would be doing this but then now you have to face the fact that you're not and you're actually going to be stuck in your apartment for the whole summer just looking for jobs and feeling shitty about yourself. I did not know I was about to endure that but that's the beginning of it. So after that I kind of got over it because I talked about it with everyone and what they said was ultimately true was that you know hey Michelle you want to do story this might have pigeonholed you so you don't know where this might have taken you maybe this would have made you go backwards who knows I kind of got over it eventually and I decided that I wanted to scrap my whole portfolio because I felt like nothing was getting me anywhere I also applied to Disney TV and I did not get accepted for that either because I had to do a test for one of their shows and I was also anxiously waiting for that after I graduated, but they ended up just, of course, rejecting me as well, but it took them a while to really say anything. Another thing I really think is that 
online applications are not as effective as you think they are. I think direct relationships and connections with people are far more effective because a show creator, a director of a certain area of a show would just know of a person that is good for this role. It's not like people in the animation industry don't know of anyone. They're like, who would be a good fit for this? But no, a lot of it is based off of friendships and past work experiences. The first push into the industry is always going to be the hardest push just because you don't know anyone, you just graduated, you don't have that backup experience. So it's gonna just come a lot harder for you in the beginning. I think I just started applying to a lot of random shit at this point. I just wanted to take anything possible. I actually did end up getting an interview with Disney Feature for a storyboard artist position, but I think that was one of the things that everyone knew from the get-go that was like, oh, like, of course you're not gonna get this position, but it's just like, they just did it because they wanted to be kind and give me the opportunity as someone who is actually a previous intern. So I appreciated the opportunity, but I think going into it, I already knew I wasn't going to get it, but it was nice to just be able to show my face to some people. Because when you're fucking trapped in your apartment all day, every day, and you are still just a graduated student with no connections or anyone other than just people from your school, you're just like, who the fuck do I talk to? So just having that opportunity was just nice. But then of course you always go back to that feeling of like, okay, well, I still don't have a job. What the fuck do I do now? So after that, I also got an email from DreamWorks Feature now asking if I wanted to apply for their story trainee program. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. So I did it and they asked me to come in for an interview. So I was really excited about that because although it was not a full-time job and it was a trainee position, I was like, okay, at least they're placing me in a position where I can grow. And that was something that, you know, I'm always trying to view the positives of everything just to make things work. So I ended up going in and I pitched my stuff to them and I left the interview feeling pretty confident about myself, but I was not sure if like, it was what they wanted because the thing about animation is that you know you might be a great artist you might be a great storyteller writer insert whatever skill it is you're great at but the thing is is if you're not a fit for them meaning you don't have a match in terms of like your personality or like the types of genres or or whatever types of films you like making that is another factor in itself so i was waiting the whole time throughout my whole trip to japan because i ended up going to japan with my family and friends as our little graduation trip it was an amazing time i fucking love going to japan but it was also kind of hard for me to go through the trip and I felt really bad because I felt like I wasn't being the best version of myself to my friends and family just because I was stuck with this negative mindset of just like being so uncertain about my future and I feel like it's such a first world problem. I was like, Michelle, you should be having fun. But I was also just like, feeling sad. So it was like, I wasn't allowing myself to feel either emotion. So I just became like a fucking rock. I anxiously waited throughout the whole trip to hear back from the DreamWorks trainee program and I was just like, I don't know, they might know. And when I was about to leave Japan, I got an email saying like, oh, we'll give you a call like when you come back. So I was like, fuck, they're gonna let me know when I come back. It's literally a coin toss at this point. Like it's either a yes or no, my fate has been decided. So I should just be ready and manage my expectations. So by the time I got back, I was, you know, already feeling really sad because my trip ended and I'm going to say goodbye to my family and friends because I don't live with them. They live across the country back in New York and I was already feeling very alone in my apartment just being stuck with my inner thoughts all day every day. Literally the day my friends were about to leave and take an Uber back to the airport was when DreamWorks called and when they were just like, hey, so we just wanted to let you know that it was a very tough decision to make, but we decided to move on to someone else for the trainee program. And obviously I was just like, okay, thank you for your time again. And I like hung up and stuff. And you know, in that moment, you want to act like you have your shit together, but I honestly felt so sick inside my stomach and that is not DreamWorks fault. Again, I'm not here to like destroy a studio's rep reputation. It's just what the situation was. Like I'm happy with my life and everything that has happened in the past. 
I was just feeling really sick and sad inside just because it's like, okay, being brought back to square one and I can see how, you know, just being alone all the time can be very detrimental to one's mental health and, you know, with time going on, you get over it eventually. So my friends were trying to help me look on the bright side of the picture and they were just like, hey Michelle, you know, even if you did not get this job position think of it this way what if you did get that job position but it totally shifted your style or your way of storytelling into a way that you didn't want to just because it's not what you want to do at the end of the day and you know that is something that i find very relevant because now i do feel like i have a stronger voice in the stories i want to tell hence my instagram and the comics i make in an alternate universe maybe i wouldn't be making comics now because honestly if it weren't for that rejection I wouldn't be making comics now. That's literally why I started making comics is because after all of these rejections, I was just like, what the fuck else am I supposed to do? So that's why I started my comics on Instagram. So I ended up just accepting my new lifestyle as just like, you know, hey, if you're not going to be employed, you can just do commissions, freelances on the side. I was working on a freelance project on the side throughout the whole summer, which is how I was able to somewhat financially support myself, but it's still not like enough to really support myself consistently. So as you all know, I ended up eventually getting my first job as a storyboard revisionist at Netflix Animation slash Glen Keane Productions, and that is where I had my first job. And I Ironically, going back to my Japan trip that I felt so sad in and, you know, just receiving the rejection afterwards and having my friends leave. Ironically, during the trip, I actually applied to that job at Glen Keane Productions through LinkedIn, but I really just kind of applied to it mindlessly, just being like, whatever, I'm just going to get rejected, but I'm just getting in the habit of just sending out my application and whatnot. So I just did that and I didn't think of it after that. I had no clue it related to the storyboard revisionist position that I got. Throughout the whole time I was working there, I had no clue it was relating back to the time that I was in Japan and just mindlessly applying to shit until I had a lunch with one of my supervisors and she's like, yeah, during the summer, I saw your application on LinkedIn and I just looked at your portfolio and I was like, Ugh, I had a that's so raven moment going back in time just in Japan in my hotel just applying to that and I was like wait so that did do something at the end of the day so that was something that I was really happy to hear about just knowing that hey all the efforts throughout that summer were not exactly wasted even after you do succeed and get your first job rejections don't end there I still have to move on to other projects and some other projects that I wanted to move on to I didn't get but I still got something and that's what I'm happy about so one of my last recent rejections was actually when I was at Netflix because I wanted to take an opportunity to at least pitch something while I was there. I did not know what was going to happen to me after Trash Truck because I'm still in that mental state of, hey, I could just be let go after this project is over and just resume back to that summer of unemployment. Like that summer just bothered me so much that, you know, I really fear going back to that lifestyle. So I was like, I need to do anything possible right now to make sure I never get back to that state of sitting alone with negative thoughts in my apartment all day, every day. So I was like, I'm just gonna do whatever it takes. Yeah, I'm gonna apply to jobs and whatnot, but hey, why not just take this opportunity to just like pitch a show or something like that, even though that's like really intense, but I kind of knew I was going to pitch a show idea, just not getting it accepted, if you know what I mean. Because for me, I felt like I just really wanted to work on my voice. I just really wanted to make sure people at least knew of my existence just in case, you know, if they need a backup dancer, <laughs> I'm here. I got in touch with someone there to pitch a show idea and it was, you know, everyone was really encouraging. No one like looked down on me just being this young girl trying to pitch shit like Who the fuck do you think you are, bitch? Like people were just encouraging because I think even if you're going to go into a pitch pitching a show and whether if it goes through or not, what's important is you fucking got your ass up there and presented your shit to people in which how many people can really do that at the end of the day? Huh? You tell me. I didn't even spend that much time working on this pitch because to some degree I knew it wasn't going to happen, but also I was just like, 
I just want to see where my initial thoughts take me. I just want to know like where my rawest, purest thoughts will take me and I will work on from there. So I ended up just making a really quick pitch. I practiced with my friends. I got it to a state where I felt like it was good to go and I ended up pitching it and I felt like the experience in general was really great, but I still did not get accepted or have it go through any further than that just because it was not what they were looking for at the moment. And I also feel like, you know, hey, Michelle, you're still young. You can kind of milk your storyboard artist moments a little more you don't really need to rush your life that much like that's not to say like don't try to take these big moves when you're still young because i think like hey i still want to do these things when i'm young but not in this portion of my young phase like i could still be young and doing this but like a little bit later in the young part if you know what i'm saying so i ended up not getting it but it was okay because i ended up actually getting recruited onto another show at netflix which i'm really grateful for again so it's like i really can't complain about anything but it was definitely a rejection that made me think more about things through a creator's standpoint because i used to get rejected more from like a storyboarding standpoint Point. But either way, I am grateful for my rejections because I feel like I learn a lot and they are very humbling and I feel like they're a reminder of areas you can grow in and it's not just technical areas you could grow in but more of mental reminders of things. So it's kind of just like remembering that, hey, it's not always about your art, it's about the ideas, it's about the voice behind it. It's about what you're trying to say and if that's a match for it or not. Don't take rejections too personally because a lot of the times it's just if your needs and this studio's needs are colliding at the same time and it doesn't mean that you're a piece of shit if they're like, oh, we just don't need this at this moment because every studio has their own business plan and it's a matter of if your thing fits their business plan at the moment and it's not necessarily if you are good or bad. It's not that black and white. Other things to remember are that it's a very specialized field, it is very competitive, but there are very limited jobs, and studios are more likely to recirculate people that are already in their studio, which I think makes sense, because if you were working at a studio already, I think you would want priority as you've already committed so much of your time to them that it's just like, bitch, if you don't fucking like at least try to reconsider me for something else, like, what are you doing? What are we? But I think one thing you can do for the times that you're not necessarily employed or working is just making comics on Instagram because I feel like it's not a portfolio or it's not work that is getting me accepted into work. I felt like I was still doing something by putting myself out there and you know there are a lot of industry people on Instagram and some of them liked my work so seeing that some of them actually liked my work despite all the rejections I was getting helped me have some confidence and just knowing that hey even if you get rejected just keep going like that was the message I was getting from you know the support of other industry people on Instagram and if you're stuck with a really old portfolio just restart it have a new start, have a portfolio that really resembles who you are now. And I was just more thankful to have the time available to just manage my own time and just be like, okay, I can take time making breakfast. I can take time working out and not have to be in such a rush because trust me, once you start working, you're gonna kind of wish for those breaks a little bit more often, especially if you're trying to like work on personal projects simultaneously, you'll really want those breaks. It'll just be so satisfying to know that you overcame that stuff. So of course it's easier said than done because when you live through the moment, it's like annoying, but trust me, it's going to be fine. But yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I'll see y'all in the next one and stay wholesome, bitches.